Hello, everyone. Welcome to Mind Body TV. I'm Dr. Kim Duramo, founder of the American Institute of Mind Body Medicine. And today's topic is something a lot of people try to avoid, but it's what I have found to be one of the greatest sources of our power our power to heal the body, our power to receive in life, our power to emerge into fluidity and abundance and beyond maybe like patterns of darkness and despair and fear and you know whatever things that can be kind of chronic that we try to work on and fix and solve and avoid but to enter into it more fully and this creates so 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 much so I'm really excited to talk about this although I don't think there's a lot of people who <clears throat> necessarily think it's a great thing and that is our shame the power of owning our shame the power that comes when we stop resisting shame. So there's a few points I wanted to make about this. Um, and for those of you who don't know me or you're new, welcome. I am um, a physician, but have really been more um, working along the lines of mind body healing rather than, you know, just traditional conventional medicine. I used to work in the emergency room and that's my training. Um, which I think is a really great space for conventional medicine where we can start your heart back up or put your arm back on or you know bring you back to life and not a great place where there's emerging of wellness where we can help people feel well where we can help people with chronic illness become more whole and ignite health so um, stay tuned if you have been experiencing you know, either a chronic illness or you have a diagnosis or it's like, wow, I just know I want to feel more alive or I'm not living as fully as I really want to live in other areas like relationship or work or money or any of these things. Uh, but certainly if there is discord in your body where there's not that harmony and health is easy and health is fluid, um, if you're working really hard for it, it's taking up a lot of your energy one of those places that energy gets sucked up like nowhere else is in avoiding shame so what is shame <clears throat> and i love to use the emotional scale and i just got off a skype session with a private client and i drew this for her because this totally came up for her with a lot of hopelessness and powerlessness and despair that was coming up for her and really um keeping her stuck <clears throat> but when we think of things on this scale the scale of emotions, we have to remember that our body is energy. Our body is made of energy. Our body operates energetically first and foremost. That means our physical substance of our body, the chemicals, the hormones, the, you know, all of the substances within the body is primarily energy. Yes, it's physical energy, but when we have to kind of separate it, like, oh, there's physical and there's emotional and this is all separate we lose the opportunity to work with the body in the way that it responds best. And that's at the level of energy. One of the biggest ways we experience energy is emotion. So everybody feel your body. Just take a deep breath, close your eyes, relax your shoulders, it will help you feel things more. And feel what you feel. Feel, do I have tension in my shoulders? Is there pain? Is there a little um, heaviness? Is there, um, sometimes it can be fluttering, like in the belly, like, ooh, maybe that's fear. But if you primarily <clears throat> tune into the physicality, you will tune into the emotional. You will tune into the energy that your body is. Um, I had someone say to me recently, well, I don't like to talk in, in terms of energy because it really scares people. And I thought, well, what's that about? Because this is just as a very neutral scientific principle of what matter is. I and mean, E equals MC squared. This was, you know, Einstein had this sorted out that energy is equal to matter. Matter is energy. And it doesn't have to be a woo-woo, freaky, spiritual, you know, principle so much as um, something very tangible now. So I think it's because it's this unknown that people get a little scared, like, whoa, I need to control. I need to understand before I can embrace something. And if you just give yourself a little space around that, it doesn't need to be so scary. One of the, the um, uh, energies that lives in our body is our emotional energy. So if there's anger or fear or overwhelm or whatever it might be, 
we will experience energy as emotion. And this is one of the biggest things that can keep energy stuck, suppressing emotion. A lot of times people think of positive emotion, joy, freedom, passion, and negative emotion, powerless, anger, despair. And so it's like, I gotta climb the scale. I wanna feel good, I wanna be in joy. But that doesn't work. <laughs> it's like you're working against yourself. Because what'll happen is you're like, all right, I'm in overwhelm, but I wanna be in joy and freedom. So now it's like, I don't wanna be where I am. This is bad, this is wrong, I don't want it. That's resistance. What you resist persists. So what, how this shows up, for example, is like, let's go to shame. I'm embarrassed about myself, I'm not good enough, I don't really deserve, I shouldn't have this, I shouldn't have that, I shouldn't have done this, I shouldn't be doing that, a lot of judgment, and I'm like, there's this energy of shame. So what I'll do when I'm in reactivity is, I'll try to overcome it. I'm gonna go um, really work hard and get good grades and then become a doctor, and then people will see that I'm enough, and people will see that I'm not unworthy. That was one of the programs running for me, like I'm not as good as everyone else. And it isn't the whole of what drove me to become a doctor. There was a lot of inspiration in that equation, but there was this tincture of this shame, I'm not enough, I need to be better, I need to try harder, I need to be a better, um, you know, like a more superior person and work harder and get it together because the underlying thing is I'm not good enough. I am a failure, I am a loser, and so that's the truth about me. But if I do all of these things, then I'll compensate for that. So we're in duality. It's not the same as the neutrality of our, the inner alignment that we are. I am all that is, I am beautiful, I am infinitely worthy. That's a totally different thing. So when we resist shame, we end up doing all these things to protect ourselves from feeling it. Doesn't mean it's not there. Doesn't mean we ever get to a place where we don't have that shame residing in us. It means we resist it so we don't have to experience it. There's a movie called The Reader, um, and I welcome your comments here for everyone who's here live. And welcome to everyone who's listening to the recording as well. Um, there's a movie called The Reader, and it has in it, um, oh, what's her name from the Titanic? Um, it's, a, it's a really, incredible movie. <clears throat> um, I have to think of her name. Uh, but, but anyway, she's in this movie and basically it takes place, oh, I think around the time of World War II, or it's even maybe earlier, World War I. So she has this, um, this younger man who she kind of falls in love with, but she has him come over and read and read stories and read um, you know all kinds of novels and you don't really understand what's going on for a while um, but one of the things that happens later on in the movie is that she is um, convicted yeah it's in World War II she's convicted for being part of um, the Nazi effort to destroy the Jews she was working in a concentration concentration camp and um, she, they told, you know, they said that she wrote this document that um, whatever it was, it was part of what would uh, convict her. She wrote this big document and the, the other women blamed her. She didn't do it. She's completely innocent. And she could have um, set the whole record straight by letting them know that she was illiterate. And then the guy who was late, years and years and years later, he's watching her court case and he realizes all of a sudden it just dawns on him. Oh my gosh, all those years where she would have me read to her, that's what it was about. She couldn't read. And then a little flashback to moments where he'd say, well, you read it. And she'd be like, no, 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 I don't want to read it. You read it. Um, but she couldn't read. She couldn't read a thing. And so she could have easily demonstrated her illiteracy, which would have meant there's no way she could have written this document and she's completely free. And because of the shame she carried to being illiterate, <clears throat> She had dignity. She wanted to maintain her dignity. She allowed them to convict her and put her in jail for the rest of her life. She had a life sentence in jail. So it was a real testament to how powerful avoiding shame will act in the body. Like I will avoid shame at all costs. I will keep my dignity at all costs. I will never let them see this shameful thing about me. 
So she judged herself and like society would judge that too. But because she judged herself, she let herself go to jail for the rest of her life instead of letting herself be seen in her shame. And that is a really great example because it's like, I'd rather go to jail for life or I'd rather have a chronic illness and never heal or I'd rather be in an abusive relationship or I'd rather never have any money or be in a job that I hate or fill in the blank of your life sentence that avoiding shame has had you receive. And what if you're willing to meet your shame? Would you be willing to meet your shame? Because in that space, you allow yourself to be free. I'm gonna, yeah, Kate wins like, of course. I think my brain's on a different channel, so I, I couldn't get that, but thank you. Yes, Kate Winslet has done a phenomenal job in that movie, and it's definitely worth seeing to bring this point home. <laughs> so Randy says, this is just what I need. The wonderful man in my life now lives in England, and we both would like for me to move there to be with him, but it feels completely hopeless for me financially Oh, but Randy, that's an old theme for you, and you've already transcended that in so many other ways. So it's beautiful that you're still really emerging beyond that life is inviting you with your heart to move beyond this idea that it's hopeless financially. You've already seen and proven to yourself that you can transcend that. You can go beyond that and welcome in resources when it feels hopeless. Um, no matter how hard I've tried to open to abundance or find ways to make money easily, it's hopeless. I have so much shame around that. Why haven't I been able to receive ideas or opportunities yet? So I would like to be able to release that. That's beautiful. Um, so we have to start by, well, one of the things that can help is to start by recognizing the ways we already have. And you have begun to open to abundance where you were you know, in a marriage that was really toxic and it's like, I see no way out, I see no way out, how could I ever get out? And as you loosened around that conclusion, an opportunity came it might not have looked exactly like you thought it was going to look but you were out of the marriage and out of that toxic environment and in your own home and buying things to make it look beautiful and honor yourself and, and and let yourself feel cherished and loved the way you had wanted to and to open and expand into that so as we open into an expansion the shame will say no 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 no, no you can't have that and i remember for you it came up like no 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 it shouldn't be so beautiful why are you focusing on beauty you should be focusing on hard work and it's like, all right, can I relax around this and allow in more beauty and more abundance? And so it's exactly the same as what you've already been doing, but do it with noticing where it's already been working in your life, even though there's still fear or shame, um, but it has already, you have already been opening. So that is beautiful. And we can make ourselves wrong for, um, I know I've done that as well, have this idea of where I should be and how it should be financially or my, my home or whatever and then like oh where I am and then to judge that as a wrongness and creates resistance and that shame is what pulls that resistance but I'm gonna get back to this emotional scale where we we make these things negative we make these things positive and it's like I want to get on the positive part and I want to feel good and I don't want to feel this I don't want to feel shame I don't want to feel hopeless or I'm wrong for feeling hopeless. Shame is the idea that I'm wrong. And if I'm depleted, then that's the wrongness of me. Just like Randy is sharing, like, wow, if I don't, if this opportunity doesn't seem readily apparent, then it's the wrongness of me and how I'm not enough. So we validate it with our experience. So, and I have a great video on my site, drkimd.com, that goes into this more fully of how it's resistance to these emotions not the emotions themselves that is the toxic thing in our life that is the block to abundance that is the block to freedom it's not these negative emotions we don't need to avoid the negative emotions at all so embracing your shame is what creates freedom not getting out of the shame so i can climb up the scale and get to freedom oh finally okay i feel free i feel free but it's temporary it's conditional it requires that I keep working at it so that you'll see the difference one is unconditional I can reside and I paint with all the colors and whatever emotions come up for me I am willing to feel them and presence them fully that's pure love that's true freedom the sort of pseudo love is like oh I feel good right now and I hope I don't start feeling bad again I hope that doesn't come back and as long as I keep doing this thing everyone knows that I'm worthy and I'm not shameful so that's conditional and that's where most people live. 
Same thing with overwhelm. When we're overwhelmed, what do we do? We work harder, we try harder, we do more. Totally contradicts what we're trying to actually achieve, but that's what we do. I'm overwhelmed, so let me work twice as hard. Or I, I have lack, so let me sacrifice myself and take two jobs. It doesn't actually work to create abundance. That's why people say, if you don't have time to meditate for 10 minutes, meditate for 20 minutes. And I used to think, fuck that. I don't have time for 20 minutes. Like I was in this linear mindset. I couldn't understand where is that time going to come from. I didn't understand or fully embody that time, space, freedom, effortlessness comes from within me, is a reflection of me. And I've had a lot of clients I've worked with, and they'll say, oh, my God, I have all this time now and so much freedom and resilience. I'm like, wow. It's because they connected with that space within them from which that ease comes and the reflection of it, more energy, more time, more money, more resources. It comes from within me. So if I'm in overwhelm, I can either <laughs> work really, really hard. Hi, beautiful Arlene. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Um, I could either work harder to try to get somewhere, which is resisting where I am, and it will only create more overwhelm. Less money, so I have to keep working harder. Less resources, so I have to keep doing it all. I see this with a lot of moms, and that will be your truth. It's not, not, not that it's not true. It's true, but you're creating it. You're creating the reflection of the overwhelm. So what do I do instead? Well, I have to buy out of the belief that it's real. I'm overwhelmed. Oh my God, I have to do this and I have to do that and I have to do that. And if I don't do it all, it won't be okay. Well, that's the lie. And you know it's a lie because the body will allow you to feel the discord of it. I think it was last week, uh, yeah, listening, how to listen to your body it was a couple weeks ago on our, on our Mind Body TV. We talked about this. Your body will never lie. It will tell you when you're buying into something that's not the highest truth for you and it will feel bad, and it will feel contracted, and it will feel overwhelming, pain. So what do we do? <sighs> Find that courage to move into the overwhelm, to really feel it without running, to really feel it without reacting. I, I used to do this in my business too, like I gotta do this, and I gotta do that, and I gotta write my blog, and then, okay, I feel a sense of achievement, now I feel better. It was temporary, it was always conditional. But it was like, but how can I just let go? And what am I going to do? Nothing. That won't create anything. Well, that's one way to see it. It's not true. Being in stillness can create so much more than operating in overwhelm. And it did for me. So can I let myself be still when I'm feeling overwhelmed? Can I let myself sit for 20 minutes and breathe? When everything in me says, no, you have to keep pushing. Therein lies the key. That is meeting the overwhelm. Even if you only do it for 10 seconds and breathe and feel what that overwhelm feels like. And some of it will move, even in 10 seconds. Because when you give your attention to the energy, the emotion, or the physical energy, like, whoa, this is what I'm feeling in my body, and you breathe, that's how your system works. It knows how to dissipate and release that energy and then you'll find like that little flicker of light come in like someone's like oh I made you dinner or oh here's a raise or oh here's you know whatever it was you're most needing and Arlene says feeling bad is new for me sure for sure since I started working with you letting herself feel it more time and money yes Arlene I know experienced a lot of <laughs> opening into like true abundance instead of the contracted, which was like, okay, I have this thing, I get to protect it, and I'm, you know, I worked so hard for it, and I can't allow myself to experience it fully. So it was like this, you know, this concrete, finite amount of money, and it was never in the infinite. It was never experienced in total flow. And then through allowing this, and allow yourself to really feel the fear or whatever that was about, she has allowed herself to receive money much, much more fluidly instead of working hard for it. And to receive the money that, she's, that she has instead of like balling it up and protecting it. Terry says, what do you do when you get shame flashes? Meaning I can stay in acceptance and well-being, 
but have these unfortunate flashes that pop into my mind at weird times in the day. I try to embrace the flash and move out, but it lingers longer than I like. Yes, it lingers because you're trying to move out of it because you're not wanting to reside there. Now, I'm not saying like, oh, I love being in shame. It's just so great. That's not the love I'm talking about. The love is the willingness. I'm willing to sit with even this. I'm willing to sit in this space of darkness. I am willing to sit in this space of shame. So it's not about getting out of it. It's about going into it. Anything that we give our attention to that's false will dissipate. Anything we give our attention to that's true will strengthen. So it's really helpful to remember that. You can trust and be present to everything that arises. And life will take care of all of that equation with mm, allowing what really nurtures you to expand. Um, Sarah says, I am gay and did not come out until my 40s. I lived with shame all of those years and the anxiety and fear of someone finding out. I've come a long way since coming out, but still experience shame when I hear politicians or clergy despairing, talk despairingly about gay people. It's taken a toll on my body. I have fibromyalgia and still suffer from some anxiety. Shame is a very, very strong emotion that can have devastating consequences on the body. I've not successfully worked my way through all of the shame. Thank you for covering this all important topic. Wow, that is beautiful. I'm super excited to connect with you. Um, that is, uh, I want to share a story too about how much shame can hold us back. But this is a beautiful and perfect example of how we have allowed from the culture and from what we learn ourselves to buy into a truth. So the culture says, well, being gay is wrong, it's bad. And even just sexuality in general is wrong and bad. You shouldn't have any sexuality. You shouldn't be a sexual being, like all of the stuff that really goes against our nature. And when we buy into it, and it's no wrongness on our part, it's conditioning. We're, we're trained in this before we've been young enough to distinguish, do I believe that? Is that what's true for me? Or no, nah, this person's got their own hang up and I'm gonna let them have it. We're too young to distinguish that. So, you know, we absorb it and then we carry it on and then we can propagate it ourselves because we're trying to protect ourselves from feeling shame. So it's like, no, I'm not gay, I'm straight, I'm straight. I've gotta be straight and we deny ourselves. We deny this beautiful part of us that wants to emerge and express and we judge that it's wrong or we kind of agree with the judgment we've been taught that it's wrong. And so then we suppress. So for yourself and for everyone else who's been in that space, can you let yourself sit with the shame? So feel into what comes up when there's this righteous clergy person in judgment about this is wrong and this is right and what happens in your body, what do you feel? And so you might feel something like <clears throat> low down in the pelvis or hips, uh, Sarah. You might feel something in the abdomen, the lower abdomen and pelvis, and feel into that. Like, let yourself feel and be curious about it. Like, what is that? Is it tension? Is it like a loose jelly kind of blah? Yeah. And you'll feel more fully. And then just take 10 breaths. Like, I'm willing to feel this. I'm willing to experience this. I don't need to push this experience away, fix myself so I don't have to connect with it. I'm willing to feel this. Even if just... 2% of it is experienced and, and dissipated, you will be living in a far higher frequency. If we think of it as an energetic frequency, higher frequency on the top part of the scale, lower frequency on the lower part of the scale, they are just energies. They're not right or wrong or good or bad. They're just energies. Can I just sit with this energy? The mind will say, it will destroy me, it will destroy me, I'll be rejected by the whole world and I'll not be able to live. It's like a survival threat, and that's why we are programmed to avoid this. But it, that's not actually true. <clears throat> Can I just sit with this energy and breathe and let it move? And that is what allows us to merge into a higher frequency, into more lightness, into more joy, into more ease, but in an unconditional way, not a way that is, uh, I got to keep up with it. <clears throat> Charlotte says, <clears throat> sorry. Meeting our shame is being authentic, and that brings beautiful freedom. Yeah, and, and Brene Brown spoke on this. She did this incredible TED Talk and met her shame. 
she's a researcher and then it was like this idea that there's this other airy fairy thing that I'm no I'm a researcher and started to meet the wrongness and judgment she had around this part of herself that wanted to explore something unseen and in our society it's like no no only the seen is real if you believe in any that airy fairy unseen stuff you're a quack <clears throat> and there's a lot of shame that gets put on that to suppress people from awakening and after being seen in this, you know, because her TED Talk just totally went viral, it brought up so much for her. But when, why did it go viral? Is because it was so beautiful. She let herself be seen. And who we are in truth is incredibly beautiful for every single one of us. We're so beautiful. And that is very attractive. And so for her, it's like, wow, she's amazing. And all the things we think are shameful, it's, when we suppress them is when we're, you. that person's creepy. And when we embrace them, it, we are so unbelievably beautiful. That's the truth about all of us. So heesh, that's really why for myself, there's been so much more abundance and fluidity in my life as I have embraced my shame, all the ways I felt and maybe still feel I'm not good enough or the wrongness of me or I'm stupid or I'm, um, which is crazy in a logistical sense, because and there's so many people that are like, I'm such a high achiever and I've done all these things. But the the talk, the shame can make all of that completely obsolete. It's like a it's like a scale you'll never get high enough. You'll never get beyond. You you'll always be not <clears throat> not enough. And it will show you proof of why and like you buy into it. It's like actually activating different areas of the brain where this one time that you failed or this one time you said something stupid or this one time you slipped up or did this thing and only those areas light up so it's like this is the reality this is the whole picture this is all that is this is the truth about me and it will prove itself to you doesn't mean it's actually true patty says i'm so happy to be here thank you jennifer kim i have another meeting with my ex-husband tomorrow despite all my work on myself i admit i still feel anxiety around sitting with him i feel like i should be over this by now which is like a judgment that you've got on yourself <clears throat> it feels hopeless. Neither he nor the therapist will listen to and understand me. I I'm going to continue with this, but a lot of these things will be a reflection of the judgment I made about myself. I'm to this or that. I'm only this. I shouldn't be listened to. I'm not really worthy. And so then I'll experience people not listening to me or valuing me. And I can invite that to be received and have me see like, oh, where am I not valuing myself? Where am I discounting myself? Where am I judging myself? Where am I deciding I'm less than? So then I need to fight and be superior and better than. And that's what's happening here in this dynamic. Because there is a truth of, well, there's fear when I'm with this person. And then there's the judgment of, it's wrong. I shouldn't, I should be over it. I shouldn't feel this. It shouldn't be this way. So like I've said here, when we resist what's coming up, because anger is on here too. Where's anger? It's like anger, kind of like above fear. <clears throat> because once we move to anger, it's like, forget, you know, screw you. You shouldn't be doing this to me. And we can emerge beyond our fear by using anger. So when someone's got a chronic anger, they're suppressing fear. <sighs> can you just let yourself feel fear? Can you just let yourself experience like, okay, I'm judging that I'm not good enough because I haven't gotten past this. But the truth is I haven't gotten past this. And like we just said that authenticity is what's so beautiful. The authenticity is what invites resolution. So can you be at least with yourself, if not with the other person, like, wow, there's a lot of fear coming up for me. At least with yourself, like, okay, I honor that I'm experiencing fear. And then you go into the situation in a very different place. And she, it goes on, Jennifer said, I am working on becoming centered and feeling the anxiety to let it pass. Is this shame I'm feeling? Yeah, the shame comes from, I shouldn't be feeling this thing I'm feeling. I should be over it by now. I'm wrong. I'm broken. I'm not enough. Uh, what would you suggest in addition to what I'm doing? So that's kind of where I'm going. You want me to feed them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's okay. Okay, Bobby Bull. So I want to say hi. I know this is a first guest appearance of the little little munchkin that I've been talking about. You can you can stay for a bit. You can stay up here for a bit. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'll, I'll come down. Okay. So, um, <laughs> I'm going to be my little baby. But I'll continue so we can. Yeah, you're doing great. You're doing great, Madonna, man. I have had an amazing experience with this baby, and definitely this has been, um, and anyone, I think, when we have children, <laughs> thank you for all the love. When we have children, it's another invitation to move beyond these places of resistance within us. We can't parent from love when we're suppressing our fear. Like how much fear comes up when we become a parent and it's like, oh my God, if this happens, if that happens, if I do this thing wrong, and it's so intense because if that if things happen that we don't want, um, they're more painful than like anything else we can imagine happening, right? If you don't have children, all right, you die or you go through some pain or someone you, you lose someone you love dearly, that's really painful. And it's like heightened and even more extreme if it's your child. So becoming a parent takes great courage, but parenting from love it takes immense, immense courage and willingness to meet these spaces in us so that we're not suppressing them and living from fear, but moving fluidly with the fear so we can parent from love. More on that in the tappingkids.com. I'm going to create that program soon. So for those of you who are parents and would like to learn more about how to assist your kids or assist yourself referent to your kids, I'm going to be creating that program probably in the next month or so, I think. Randy says, yes, thank you so much for the reminder. You're right. And actually, it was by embracing the shame and fear that I had been ghosted by six guys in a row and just deciding I didn't need to fix or change anything else about that. That I would just love myself more than ever before. That I had met my guy, and then I met my guy the next day. Ah, I know that's so cool. I had a very similar experience. And he's such an amazing, awesome man. So I will open to this same process when it comes to these issues around money and work. Yeah, Randy, you're in a conclusion that it can't work out. And I lived like that for a long time. Like, where are we going to live? Where are we going to find a house? How's it going to work out? We don't have this in place. We don't have that in place. And even like all the things in the linear world that are required to make that happen, like to get a mortgage. And, you know, we didn't even have, they're like, we want contracts from your employer. And we're like, well, I am my employer and he is his employer. And we don't fit that mold. So we could have gone into so much despair around we can't buy a house. We're going to live in this little shack. You know, it won't work. Um, but and not that there wasn't any of that. But we didn't live. We didn't go, sink into that and buy into that. We let ourselves explore other possibilities like, well, how could it work out? What could it look like that goes beyond everything I've been taught or learned about possibility? What could it look like that is, is even more expansive and is an amazing fit for us? And it was this creative, incredible, awesome way that we have our now beautiful home and we live here. Carol says, this is perfect for me today. I was running, trying to do stuff I thought I wanted to do, but realized it felt bad, like pushing. I was caught up in an old story. I want something. Then the, feel that maybe I can't have it, then think I'm going to push and make it happen, but this feels so bad. That's where a lot of people go about their health, and it creates more illness. So I stopped, and then I saw the notice about this video. Thank you, Dr. Kim. Ah, that's so cool. I had someone um, who was on the medical medium that was on that site and was trying really hard to follow that program and, like, you know, restrict herself. Not that it can't be used in a really beautiful way that that program Anthony Williams has. But she was kind of like, all right, I got to do this, and I can't do this, and da, da, da. And it was really in the linear mind and really restrictive for her. And it wasn't working. And she said, you know, they don't really share about other people's work ever, at, which I can understand. Um, but this, you know, this little hit I had, go in the Facebook site. And her mind was like, no, that's, that's not where I need to go. And it was like, no, go into that Facebook site. So she went on to that Facebook group. And for like that 10-second window, Someone had posted and shared something about my work and before they took it off. And she's like, I just happened to be in there. And that tense, or however many minutes it was, I don't know, where that was on there. And I found your work. And it made a massive difference for her. Um, in, the, in the first session, she said, you've saved my life. <laughs> Which isn't really about me. It's, it's, it's her set. She listened to the hit. You know, life is instructing you and having people show up and show up and resource you 
but you are the one who listens and you are the one who says yes and you are the one who's ready to receive it and has the willingness so it's not so much about there's no one who's your savior as much as collaborators people who are also finding their yes and saying yes to their yes as you say yes to yours and that's synchronicity so um so that is yeah so it's not ever going to come from pushing because when we when we operate in overwhelm it creates more overwhelm when we operate from joy and love it creates more joy and love and all of the things that are a match for that frequency abundance harmony ease fluidity i'm sorry <laughs> All right. How does one ignore the eight signs of severe kidney disorder? Um, is there a way to go around this? I wouldn't ignore signs. There, so, so this is Gail. Um, ignoring what your body is speaking, to, especially when it's clear. You're saying metallic taste, change of taste in foods, fatigue, dry skin. Sounds pretty clear to me, especially if you're aware there could be a kidney disorder, that um, you should reach for resources in that way. Life will let you know. Hey, guess what? Ding, 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 ding. There's something that needs to be addressed. And through that space of embracing self-love, you can find a nurturing, loving, caring physician who just happens to know exactly how to treat that kidney disorder and have it be a fluid experience where you have what you need to receive those resources. So don't fight yourself here or think, well, if I'm embracing love, I shouldn't have any problems at all or need to do anything or need medication. And that's crap. Um, no offense to you, but, but sometimes we buy into that for ourselves. It's not the truth. So don't play games with yourself. Um, you can embrace, but the point is that you'll receive the resources that are there that will assist you in living harmonically. It doesn't even mean we live completely free of symptoms or free from disease. It means we live in harmony with that so that we grow in the way that that is inviting us to expand until we've already received it and we don't need that symptom anymore, for example. But that could be a lifetime that we work and play with that limitation as a way of experiencing a specific situation that is exactly what we need for our own expansion. So you can't really live in judgment that way. Martha says, thank you. Your message is spot on always. I recently recognized the self-judgment and shame I've held for so long that has held me back especially the fear of living larger, shining my light because I'm afraid of what will others, of making others feel small. Why? Because I'm holding on to me being comfortable feeling small, acknowledging the discomfort of expansion. Yes, it isn't always comfortable, but it's always expansive and beautiful and fulfilling. And so can I sit with what is coming up for me, the shame, the fear, whatever, to allow that expansion? Heather says, would it help to be present and tap at the same time when you get these flashes or when you feel this shame? Is this neutralizing? Yeah. So tapping something I really love and the, re the way I use it is I'm going to acknowledge the shit I'm feeling and I'm just going to allow it to be as it is. When you use tapping to try to fix it or make it go away or I've got to get my health or why do I still have this headache? I'm tapping. It's still there. It's not working for me. You have an agenda. That is not how any of this works. It's not about what you want or what you think should happen. It's about how can I give myself what I need to move through this experience in more harmony, in more fluidity? How can I give myself what I need? Presence, love, attention. That isn't the same as absence of fear or absence of shame. Um, I do have a story I had said a few minutes ago I wanted to share where really alerted me to how much the energy, the frequency of shame holds back awakening, holds back expansion on the planet. I had a really beautiful friend who had an awesome body of work, and he's a doctor, he's a chiropractic doctor, and kind of wanted to come out with this new way of doing things. And he did have some ideas about that, like, whoa, are people really ready for this? Or what will they think of me if I start kind of doing my doctor thing in this way versus a more conventional way in my chiropractic practice where it's like brick and mortar, I go in, I do boom, 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 I have the secretary, you know, these people who respect me and I know who I am and they know who I am and this is how I'm seen to step out of that. So he was developing this other more expansive body of work and sharing this message, but it was kind of two separate things. And then it came to the point where this, this new body of work was really taking off and he's like, 
I'm ready to leave my chiropractic practice. And that's when he started to become symptomatic. He got hoarse. He couldn't speak like at all. And it shut down. And he only realized after we did like some tapping and some things together, what was really going on. But he went to the ear, nose and throat doctor. He went to all these different specialists, like what's wrong with my vocal cords? What's wrong with my voice? Why can't I speak? And it got to the point like he couldn't function because he couldn't speak at all. And so we, we worked together and he began to see there was this like the wrongness of this new way of doing it. And am I really ready to be seen in this? The hoarseness set on the very day that he signed over the practice to the other doctors he was working with and like left. And now it was like, <gasps> I'm really letting myself be seen in this new way of doing it that is so judged and so wronged. And even in um, medical school, like when I was in school in an osteopathic medical school, we learned like, oh, the chiropractors are bad and this way of doing it is bad and don't trust this you know, we know what we're doing. And it's like, are you kidding me? And then the, the MD conventional medical students learn the osteopaths and the chiropractors are bad and they're wrong. Don't ever send your patient to them because they don't know what they're doing in their quacks. And so it's trained into your brain to think this way about other ways of doing things, new, more expansive ways of doing things, things, approaches that may have something to offer for your patients, but you don't look there because you're taught that it's wrong and you will be shunned and rejected if you go over to that camp, if you begin to look and explore that camp, shame is used to suppress awakening. Same thing in religions. I grew up Catholic. They use shame like freaking as much as they can. They will take it and use it for pretty much any manipulation. And sure, that happened in my family in so many ways, but from fear. Like if my mom was afraid I was going to go do this or do that, she would she would use shame to make to control me and not have me go do that behavior. How dare you think that you could blah 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 blah, you know? But it was because she was so afraid that like I could get hurt or I could die or I could whatever. I get it. But and she was trained to use shame as manipulation. But that's a lot of what's happened and why so many religions are falling away, falling out of favor is like, whoa, I'm not willing to live in shame and use shame anymore. I can begin to love my nature and know that the more love and nurturance I give myself and my body and my sexuality and my appetite, whatever, the more I'll emerge into wholeness and health. What shame teaches us is the more we feed and nurture ourselves, the more we'll be bad and wrong and can't be trusted. So we have to starve ourselves off and be asexual and discipline ourselves so that we can be in control. But that's the lie about our nature. And nature is one of beauty and fluidity and expansion. It's not our nature that if we're given freedom and unconditional love, we would overeat or abuse our bodies. Um, so anyway, that is a story. And once um, he acknowledged the shame and was willing to move into it and just embrace all the judgment he had, he could release that. And he brought his voice back and went on to create a very successful body of, um, of work that has assisted so, 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 so many people. And yeah, it's, it's a lot of doctors are living in shame. And they'll say like, well, this isn't on the record, but here's what I really think you should do. Go and do acupuncture, go and do blah, 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 Reiki, energy healing. But it's like, well, that I'm not telling you that as a doctor because as a doctor, I'm only supposed to tell you these things that what we already know. <laughs> and then these other things in the unknown, I don't exactly know how they work, they're not safe. So that's just a judgment, but we're really awakening beyond that to begin to allow the unknown to present itself to us more fully and explore the unknown more willingly and more courageously. Christy says, the last three days, I've been able to apply your advice and wisdom to feel the emotions like existential terror for a long, for a short time and tap and breathe through them. I'm facing the fears more. He's asleep, so I'll just keep him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll be done in like five minutes, yeah. Thank you. Um, I have my nanny here for the first time and she's wonderful. And so I'm kind of getting a little more in the swing of working a little bit and it's been awesome. Um, but Chrissy says, I'm facing the fears more. I'm practicing being willing to stay in the space in order to heal. Not easy, but I'm committed. Yeah, that in and of itself, like I'm willing to sit with whatever comes up, no matter how hard that is for me to be with. That alone can give us more strength and more power and can allow the body to begin to heal very, very, very quickly. So one of the things I didn't mention is 
like how much these lower energies suck up our power. So all that power that could easily go into digesting food or balancing your adrenals or whatever you're doing in your life, repairing from running a marathon or just repairing from your toxic work environment, detoxifying your body, all of that energy that could happen really beautifully to keep you healthy is getting like 90% of it sucked into that shame. And then you get like 2% of it in some other thing that's fear. And then 3% of it that's in anger, or worry, or some past thing that your energy is caught up with. And now you get like this teeny little fraction of your power to work with and function on every day. And it's like, why am I not healing? Well, holy God, if we can really understand how much of our power these lower energies suck up. And they dictate everything you can and cannot do. Like for my friend, it was like, I can't go in this other practice and express this amazing uh, insight that I have and this amazing thing I'm inspired to share. No, 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 no. I have to do this other thing. Be careful. That's a lot of what's been happening in medicine, why it's kind of like taken so long for people to come around. It's not that at the individual level, doctors don't already know a deeper truth. It's that at the collective level, they've sort of been brainwashed into denying and suppressing and fearing it. Arlene says, yeah, but, meaning I achieve great things, and my head says, yeah, but I'm not good enough. I'm familiar with freaking that. I'm very familiar with that. After, like, you know, graduating college, I got a honors. I was a double major. I was chemistry and biology, blah, 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 blah. I went into this whole thing that like, oh my God, I'm, I'm a failure. I'll never make it. I'm never gonna achieve anything. I'm never gonna amount to anything. Like it's crazy because it will eat everything. It doesn't matter how much you've achieved, how much money you have, how many people love you, that shame will just eat it all up and it's gone. It doesn't even matter. <laughs> so I get it. Oh, thank you. So I'm gonna complete, uh, oh, there's just a couple more questions or comments. So Jennifer says, yes, I'd like to clarify this meeting is to talk about our children. We have so many differences about how to raise them. So if you're meeting with your ex, um, and this is like how many of us have these kind of circumstances, there's fear because you think what you need will not be met. Okay. So this is a person who may or may not be a sociopath. But when you connect with your fear and allow it to move through, there will be a rearrangement of the situation. So that person who may not be a sociopath and may actually be able to open up to their heart where you can work together at that level and like, okay, we both want what's best for this kid or kids. We're both experiencing fear, but how can we work together to honor ourselves and create what's going to you know, be some agreements that will have us both feel um, complete around this. Uh, or if it is someone who's completely unwilling to go there, as you move into your serenity, it will have that person somehow, by the magic of the universe, like not be part of the equation anymore. And I've seen this so many times that uh, it's not, I'm not, there's a certainty around it. I understand how that works, but it's really through meeting the space of like, wow, I'm scared to death that I won't get what I need. I'm scared to death that I will suffer in the worst possible way and like really meet that so that it's no longer running the show and creating your life and creating a relationship with him and creating the circumstances and the dialogue so that you move into greater serenity and now that space of your essence is creating your life and creating the possibility with him. Okay, Martha says, when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Coincidence is God slash the universe's way of attempting to re remain anonymous. Oh, that's cute. Gil says, I love the Anita Morjani videos that you've alluded to. Anita Morjani had an amazing healing experience. I can identify with her experience and have had similar experience. And I know there's hope. Thank you for this suggestion. Okay, yes. So can we all invite ourselves into more fluid, fluidity and aliveness and expansion and health and ease and freedom um, by embracing our shame and no longer resisting that experience? I'm sending you so much love and light as I celebrate my own love and light and celebrate my little, let me show you this little bitty boo. He is an absolute light and a sweetheart and a little angel and was definitely conceived in that space of fluidity um, that I am, was aware of it. And it was an incredible moment of me embracing 
all that is within me, embracing, I embrace my man, I embrace myself, I embrace the things I think are the shit and the things I think are the good, I embrace all of it in total willingness. And in that moment, I didn't know it was a moment of conception, but it was a moment of conception and it was beautiful. I did feel my body open up in this really profound way with my husband and, um, here we have it. <laughs> I can be found at drkimd.com um, if you'd like to continue to explore these things together and receive from me. Um, I'll be here every Wednesday at 10 a.m. Pacific and 1 p.m. Eastern. And we are starting up the Embracing Health program for those of you who'd like to work with me live. It was a very profound, beautiful experience for all of the participants we had last time it's a five month program online you know we have calls it's very easy to participate it's not about um, all the stuff you need to do so much as moving into this alignment of harmony with yourself and allowing that to do the work for you that to do the work of healing from physical mental emotional stress and strain and illness and discord to allow yourself to live in more wholeness and vibrance and i was so excited to see so many people come through that program and embrace that light and begin to see healing and witness a profound miraculous healing that was beyond their reach before. So I welcome you to that program. It's at drkimd.com forward slash health if you would like to check that out. And um, in whatever way makes sense for you, I'm uh, very, very eager to contribute to your expansion. Sharing so much love with you and I will see you soon. Bye.